to the Breeze Mall. This way goes down towards Victoria Plaza and uh, the BI office, Bureau of Immigration. And uh, this way goes back to where I live at SM and Mai Mai Road. Um, today, uh, what are we talking about today? Let's talk about family code law. And the word there is family code. Uh, it is a law. Uh, and it is uh, 1196, 1195 and 1194 of the Family Code Act here in the Philippines. Uh, and what does it mean? Well, it means that if you have a family in the Philippines, you have a uh, legal responsibility for your elders, your siblings, and your immediate family. Uh, there are some exemptions. Now, I don't know all the exemptions because the exemptions are deemed to be part of the challenge that you make if you don't agree with the family code law or you take one of your uh, family or one of your siblings to court to challenge the family code law under the 1194, 1195, 1196. So what does it actually mean? Well, there are, there are categories. The first category is to put a roof or have a roof over somebody's head. The next one is to medically support your immediate family. The next one is to clothe. The next one is to feed. Uh, and there is a fifth one about schooling and education. And um, each one of those categories you can challenge in the court. Uh, if you feel that one of your family or your family are not supporting under the family code. So, uh, mother and father, for example, look after you, you get old, or they get old, they then turn around and retire. It's responsibility by law for the siblings to look after uh, that family member or those family members, making sure that they have out a roof over their head, they've got food, they got clothing, they got medical, and they've also got uh, education and um, schooling. Yeah. Um, now, what I see is I don't see a lot of the challenges coming from family against family because there is there's not a lot of money, and it's all about the money. And there is a word in the law that turns around and say, it says that if you are able to, and that's key, if you are able to, uh, if you're not able because you don't have funds, you don't have money, then you can support with what you have. And it's under the family code. Now, if there's a family, and this is why I'm doing this vlog today, if there is a family and you're going out with the daughter as a foreigner, then that daughter is seen to be able to support her family. And that's where the pressure gets put on to the family, the immediate family, for the young lady or your partner or your Filipina to support their family because she is perceived to be able because she's going out with a foreigner. Now, if it goes further and you get married, and this is where it becomes quite interesting, then the family can pressure the daughter to add, add to
to add uh, pressure to the daughter to support the family under those five categories. A roof over their head, food, education, medical and clothing. And this is where sometimes as an outsider or a foreigner or a long nose that you can get into trouble where or get into issues when the family turn around and say, well, we can take legal advice because the daughter can pay for it. We can then challenge to get more money out of a foreigner. But that also then adds pressure to the family. Uh, and they, here, they'll, if the, the daughter Filipina is going out with a foreigner, they see it as an allowance will be this pressure asserted and then your partner or your wife or your well let's be partner first is then pressured which then affects her because then she feels that her family given her pressure and her allegiance lies to her family but on the other side of it she's got a partner that's going to improve her life and she doesn't want to pressurise him so they, she comes up with ways or they come up with ways to actually word that I need this and this and you'll see these things it's like oh my, my granny's in hospital my auntie's in hospital uh, they need this, they need that this all comes under this heading of family code medical now if you get married to your Filipina then the family code changes because the family code to the Filipina uh, with a foreign husband is you can afford it it's not are you able it's you can afford it in the, the eyes of um, your, your wife's family because you are a rich foreigner so it moves when you get married out of this uh, able to afford to you can afford now before 1988 there was a law in the Philippines and there's still a law that if you got married then what is yours before that date is, is yours and what is your wife's is your wife's and you don't mix them after 1988 what's yours 50% of it is now your wife's which means 50% of your asset can be claimed under family code unless you've got a prenuptial agreement and at the moment in the Philippines a lot a lot a lot of people do not get married unless they have a prenuptial agreement if one party has a bit of money, there is a prenuptial agreement gr agreed to that the 1st of January we're going to get married. Everything before the 1st of January that I own is mine. And you record that in your prenuptial agreement. And then everything before the 1st of January, your wife-to-be lists everything and you sign it before you get married. Don't sign it afterwards you sign it before prior to you getting married and that becomes your prenuptial agreement for when you get married and then from that day 1st of January onwards everything that you have and as a couple you turn around and work towards half of it becomes your wife's and then that asset becomes you can afford it and your family have the right to take you to call to turn around and say I, I need help or assistance with my medical. I need help and assistance with this. I need help and assistance with it. And they are legally able to do that. And they have a legal right because it's law. However, and this is the thing, there are there, there are exceptions but those exceptions will be de deemed by the court they're not deemed by you 
they're not deemed by your wife and they're not deemed by your wife's family and you need to uh, you need to understand that and if you turn around and think as a foreigner that let's turn around and take the US uh, you can go back to the US and your spouse doesn't have any rights under US law she does because it's part of the common family code yeah it's part of that family code law here and it's also linked into the US uh, and it's also linked into other countries so I only found out about that I found about this this week and I, I found it very 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 interesting that the, the codes under the family code law in the Philippines is quite encompassing and covers a lot of issues and the five categories I've listed being a roof over my head, a how, uh, medical, clothing, food and schooling and education that is all supported by this code. Now under the code if the family turn around and say or oh, we'd like you to pay for us to go on a luxury holiday to Singapore that's not covered if they turn around and say oh I want to send my family to be educated in the US it's not covered it's one of those things that education is here in the Philippines if you want to go and be educated overseas then you have to supply that sponsorship and get the results here uh, but there is no automatic claim on your asset as the husband to turn around and take it to the next level and pay for all of that it's medical here not medical in the US or UK or France it's education here in the Philippines it's not education in other countries around the world so there are parameters on what you can and cannot claim for or you could put in for it and it's not about getting a more you know luxurious lifestyle and it's not about oh I need a mode of transport I need to buy a two million uh, peso 4x4 SUV truck whatever it is that does not come into the family code it is quite clear that it's a roof over your head it doesn't deem and it doesn't say what type of roof it doesn't turn around and turn around and say to what extent on medical support um, but once you turn around on support you're not going to turn around if somebody's you know on life threatening and they do need an operation it could cost you 50 500,000 pesos uh, and if you're married then you have to support if you're not married then you have a right to turn around and uh, decline and it's down to your partner to supply that support under family code to the family yeah I found it quite interesting listening to it the other day and understanding it uh, it, it is quite an intense law not a lot of the Filipino people families know about it because if they did they'll be queuing up to uh, do the family code or you know a lot of a lot of families here don't have a lot and they don't they don't they just go with what they've got and if you turn around and give them a couple of thousand pesos they're happy for that um, but your partner when she's married has has access to your assets unless you've got a prenup no prenup it reverts back to the 50 50 law 50 percent is your wife's and 50 percent is yours whether it's in this country or overseas now you might turn around and disagree with that but the states in the u.s all have uh, rights and they all have laws regarding wives and they are quite stringent laws uh, I think there's the uh, the less demanding laws are in Nevada but in California and in New York they are the strictest to support the wife from 
the American husband. Whereas in the UK, uh, anything over 104 weeks, you're deemed as a common law wife. And uh, prenup is not a big thing in the UK. Prenuptial agreement is not massively gone through in the UK. But here, you have to have it if you're going to get married. If you don't have it, half of your asset could be claimed by your wife. Just think, think about that. So what is family code practice law? It's, uh, it is a law, it's not made up, it's passed and it governs the families of the Philippine people. The children here have to support their parents, the parents have to support their children, the children and the parents have to support the grandchildren, the parents and the children and have to support the adopted children. Yeah, and because if you turn around and adopt and you take that person under your name, then you have a right, a legal responsibility to adhere to the family code. But if you go to the adoption agency, part of that contract that you agree to is agreeing to the, fam the Philippine family code of practice. So today, down here, in a breeze of mouth, something else I've learned. 